Lights, Camera, Action Welcome back to Flick Flash, this next thrilling auto chase epic. A prequel to George Miller's blockbuster 2015 reboot Mad Max, Fury Road, centers on the film's metal-armed heroine Furiosa, with Anya Taylor-Joy playing a younger version of the same role originally performed by Charlize Theron. If the teasers for Miller's newest gasoline-powered prequel have you excited, you'll be happy to hear that there are plenty more Mad Max films hiding out in the wasteland of film. Without further ado, let's quickly review everything that has transpired in the Mad Max franchise thus far, from Taylor Joy's Furiosa to Mel Gibson's Max. What transpired in Mad Max, Miller's 1979 Mad Max film, which took place a few years from now, starred Gibson as a police officer who became a ruthless vigilante following the breakdown of society, and the dearth of resources that reduced Australia to a savage wasteland. The movie is renowned for providing one of Gibson's first major parts, even before he became well-known in Hollywood. Starring as Mad Max Rokotansky as Gibson, we watch as he attempts to keep things in order in a world that is becoming more and more insane as the movie goes on. Max sets off on a brief journey with his wife and little child right when he thinks everything is gone. Along the way, they come across a road gang lead by a figure by the name of Tokater, who kidnaps and kills Max's family. With the help of his supercharged black V8 Pursuit Special Automobile, Max spends the rest of the film tracking down Tokater and his crew in order to get revenge for the murders of his family. These events lay the stage for a revenge mission. What transpired in Mad Max 2? In Mad Max 2, or the Road Warrior as it was subsequently called in certain regions, such as America, Max is tasked with defending a quiet settlement from a vicious motor gang. Miller's second picture has elements of a cinematic western, even if Max is still troubled by his family's murder in the first part. Max gradually rediscovers empathy and compassion while assisting in the protection of the settlers who are innocent. Max assists the party in avoiding the leaders of the itinerant gang, Lord Humongous and Wes, who threaten to steal the settlers' petrol supply in return for their lives, while preserving their supplies. By the time the movie ends, Max had given the settlers permission to create a new, tranquil haven in the midst of the mayhem before vanishing into the dystopia. What transpired in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome? In Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, Gibson gives his last performance as Max to date and welcomes singer-turned-actor Tina Turner into the franchise. The movie, which came out in 1985, follows Max as he gets his car stolen and must travel to Bartertown. He meets Turner's anti-entity here, a leader who promises him his vehicle back if he kills Master, one of her competitors, and Blaster, his muscle, who serves as his bodyguard. Max embarks on a new mission to satisfy Andy since Master controls a gasoline refinery that she desires. Along the process, Max grows to feel sympathy for Blaster, and when he refuses to murder him, Andy finally casts him out into the wilderness. He finally assists Master and the young tribe in outwitting Andy and gaining access to the refinery and its electricity, enabling them to form a new society. It is here that he meets a group of young survivors who are seeking for a legendary oasis. Max makes an attempt to join them, but he declines, proving that he is a lone road warrior. How did Mad Max, Fury Road end? Miller's Mad Max, Fury Road, which was released 30 years after Beyond Thunderdome, is a reboot of the Mad Max franchise, with Tom Hardy replacing Gibson in the title character. It also introduced us to Imperator Furiosa, played by Theron, a desolate outcast who needs Max's help to free a group of women who are being held captive by a warlord. And Morton Joe, the enemy warlord, is in charge of many of the resources that the people living in his citadel depend on. Joe uses every ounce of might and several armored vehicles to find Furiosa and bring his imprisoned wives back to freedom after learning that she is trying to smuggle them. Hardy's Max is troubled by the people he has let go of and sees a chance for atonement in aiding Furiosa in her struggle with Joe. Even if they eventually succeed, Max once more chooses to live alone rather than move in with them in their new paradise house. Thank you once again for being a part of Flick Flash. Until next time, keep watching, keep exploring, and keep that movie and TV magic alive. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and stay tuned for more exciting recaps. This is Flick Flash, signing off.